going on, people of the world? My name is Jay, and welcome to Slide of Hand 101. Today we will be learning the five essentials to becoming a card magician. Now, before we begin, I ask that you get a writing utensil and something to write on because we will be taking notes. So let's just jump right into it. Step one, you're going to need a deck of cards. Now, the great thing about Slide of Hand is you only need a deck of cards. You don't need any gimmicks or any gadgets or anything of that sort. We're going to be learning Slide of Hand, meaning you can do this with any deck of cards. Preferably though, you'll bring one of your own because you're used to it and uh, you can really get some good decks online that are kind of fitted more towards magic and also just really interesting designs and stuff like that. Step two, get it in your mind that you know you can do this. I promise things are gonna be very tough when you learn sleight of hand, especially when you're practicing in front of people that you know, your family, your friends, and people that you don't know, you will fail. However, you must realize that you can do this. For me, I've been practicing sleight of hand for about 12 years and even today I fail in front of people and, and I fail all, all the time. So you need to realize that you will fail, but you can do it. So stick to it and practice, practice, practice. Step three is overcoming presentation. This is really key when you want to learn how to become a card magician. There will be times when you feel pressured when you uh, screw up or when you, you just either forget what you're doing or, or somebody spots you mid-card trick. You have to understand that it's going to happen. You have to be able to overcome the fear of presenting in front of people. Now, a couple ways you can practice. Obviously, you can practice in front of a mirror. I did that for a little bit. It really does help, and it also keeps your eye contact with yourself because you know exactly what you're doing, and the person in the mirror knows exactly how the card trick works. So if you screw up, they screw up. It really doesn't matter, but the great thing about performing card tricks is most people, and I mean, you get those occasional people who are, uh, are real jerks when it comes to these and they point out your card tricks. You get that quite a few times, but you have to push past that. The idea is that when people see you and you're presenting, they don't care if you mess up. If they, I mean, the good part is if you mess up, they get to see how the trick is done. That's the only downside. But also if you mess up and they don't see it, they don't really mind. You can just restart the card trick. People are very forgiving in this business. So you have to understand that Getting over that fear of presenting is key and you must practice and this means going out into the world and doing it. You can't just rely on staying inside and practicing in front of a mirror. You need to go out. So a tip that I would give you is find somebody you can always practice on. Somebody who may or may not learn the tricks as you go because you're failing or, or something of that sort. But you need to find somebody that you can really just show your tricks to all the time. Practice on that person. That person will be your audience. And then when you move on and, and start practicing in front of people that you don't know or people that you do know, going to a party, going out and doing street magic, it doesn't matter. When you get to that level, you know what you're doing because you have somebody you can practice up against. Now I know that me personally, I had my best friend Ben. He was, he, I mean, he knows most of my tricks. There are a couple of tricks he does not know because I haven't screwed up in front of him. But for at least four or five years of learning my magic, he was the guy that I would practice in front of and also my father. My father was a great critique. You need to get somebody who will 100% critique you. Okay, you cannot have somebody who says, oh, it was okay. You need somebody to say, no, I saw it. You know, I saw how it was done. You need to do this better. You need to find somebody that can do that for you. So overcoming your fear of presenting is very important. This leads us into step four, keeping your composure. Now, this kind of goes in, in, hand in hand with overcoming your fear of presentation. When you get to that stage when you're actually presenting in front of people, you have to understand that you need to keep your composure. Now, I personally, when I go up in front of people, sometimes I shake. My hands shake, they tremor. And you can't really help it. It's not, I mean, the best thing you can do is take a deep breath and, and you do that. But it is kind of nerve wracking if you haven't either done it in a while or uh, if you just don't really know what you're doing. So keeping your composure is very key. And it's something that you just need to develop through practicing and practicing and just going out and doing it. That is really the main thing is going out and doing it. And that leads us into step number five, practice. There's a great quote that I'm going to reiterate from Larry Gelwix. He was the rugby coach for the Highland rugby team. I can't exactly remember the years, but this was his quote. Practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes permanent. You need to understand that you have to practice. You cannot just let these things happen. It took me 12 years to get where I am today, and I still need to practice. Occasionally, I practice on and off, and, and really, it's something you do when you want to do it. Don't make it a job. Make it something that you like to do. Go out there and practice magic on the people you care about. Like I said, your best friend, your, your father, whatever it is, learn this for you. 
Don't do this because you want to impress everybody. That is just a bonus. Do it for you. This is something, this is a, a skill. Sleight of hand can be used for tons of different things, both legal and illegal, although I don't condone illegality. However, you know, I don't control your life. All I'm saying is you need to practice. It does make permanent. And even today, me, per, me personally, like, I still screw up. I still shake. I still make mistakes. It happens. You need to learn to practice and love it because it's really, really enjoyable when you get these things down. You know, buy Dan and Dave Buck DVDs. Those guys are amazing. They give great DVDs. They're the trilogy, the and then some. Um, you know, there's I can't exactly remember them, but also Chad Nelson's DVDs are great. Just buy DVDs. Spend a little bit of money. Spend a little bit of time learning these things. Go on YouTube for the first, you know, not for the first couple years because YouTube didn't exist at the time, for, but for a, a good couple years when YouTube did exist, the only thing I did was look up card tricks, look up tutorials, and I practiced. And that was it. You just need to practice. Practice, 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 practice makes permanent. Remember that. So let's review the five essential steps to becoming a magician. The first step, get a deck of cards. This is very, very important. They're very, very cheap. I would suggest getting a bicycle deck just to start out, or maybe even just uh, some plastic cards or some cards that you find around the house. Just make sure they're not absolutely trash. You wanna get some cards that you can play with that are flexible, clean, clean is the best. These are kind of dirty, but clean makes a good presentation. You like a clean presentation. So get a clean deck of cards. Step two, know that you can do this because I promise you can. There will be times when you fail horribly and you embarrass yourself in front of everybody and you know what you cannot succeed unless you fail that's something that i've picked up throughout all these years is you cannot succeed unless you fail so learn to accept failure you can do this just go out there and prove that you can step three overcoming your fear of presentation you need to do this this goes hand in hand with the next two and as well as with the previous rule you need to go out there and practice and just get out there go out there and do it because if you don't get into the field you're just gonna sit behind the cubicle all day and that's really it you have to learn you must experience you must overcome your fear of presentation if this is something that is really really tough for you this is really good to learn because you can also use this if you're giving speeches or if you're presenting in any way you get really good at talking to people and using your eyes and and not really in a bad way, but manipulating people to your will. And that's something that can be really, really useful with magic. It can also be useful in other ways. We're not going to learn about that. Step four, keeping your composure. You must, must learn to do this. I promise it's not going to be easy. And I promise that even when you do learn it, you will fail. It happens and it happens to me all the time. It happens to the higher ups, Chad Nelson, Dan and Dave Buck. You'll hear those names, I'm sure, down the road if you do start you know, your magic tour. But you have to learn how to effectively keep your composure in these situations and really it's all about getting experience and failing and step five and this is the most important rule for any magic you need to practice practice doesn't make perfect practice makes permanent learn that and know it and practice get out there and practice get on YouTube practice DVDs don't illegally download them, buy them. They are worth it, I promise you that, and it's definitely better than getting in jail. So, learn to practice and love it. Don't do it because you're, you're trying to impress people. That's gonna happen. You know, there are tons of bonuses that come with this, this entire sleight of hand deal, but you need to learn to do it for yourself. Do it for yourself. That's the biggest thing. Personally, this has really changed who I am. It changed how I, present to people how I how friendly I am honestly and you know what it, it really does help when somebody says hey I know that guy he does magic tricks and like you know even if it, it's not really nerdy it really isn't no people think it's cool now regardless I don't think it'll you know get you a girlfriend it doesn't always happen that way but it is really good when you're trying to make a good impression and for girls got a uh, boyfriend apologies but you just got to get out there and got to practice Okay, do this for yourself, make it a hobby, make it something that you love to do, not something that's your job. Remember those five essentials, come back to this video, write them down, that's why we got your utensil and that piece of paper. Write these things down, memorize them, know them. They're very essential. These are the five essential things to becoming a magician. You cannot progress forward without these things. I promise this will make it so much easier. Pretend these are the spark notes to your big library book, okay? 
these are the spark notes. Follow these guidelines, learn, practice. I promise you will fail. I promise you will fail. But that's the beauty of it. Once you fail 60, 70 times, you're not afraid of it anymore. You actually enjoy going out there because you know that you won't fail this time. Because you've done it so many times, you know exactly what not to do. Practice, okay? Get out there, all right? These five essential things are the key ingredients to the soup, to the recipe, okay? Learn these things. Now before I go, I wanna ask if you liked this video, please hit that like button, it really does help me. You know, if you didn't like the video, it's also just common courtesy. Hit that like button, you know? Hit that like button, comment, whatever you want. I read every single comment, and make sure to check out my channel for more gaming and card trick related videos. I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Peace.